Welcome to the Let the Stray Show, your one-stop destination for intriguing conversations with extraordinary individuals who are boldly navigating life outside the conventional norms. Our host, Scott Fullerton, is thrilled to embark on this journey of discovery with all of you. The Left a Straight Show, we believe that every person's story is unique, and it's our mission to showcase the diversity of human experiences. We bring you the untold stories of fascinating people who identify as LGBT plus and allies, pushing boundaries, breaking stereotypes, and making a positive impact in our communities. On this show, we bring you a diverse lineup of inspiring guests, from activists to artists, and entrepreneurs to entertainers, and everything in between. We dive deep into their personal journeys, discovering the pivotal moment that has shaped their lives and careers. You can expect thought-provoking discussions on a wide range of topics, from LGBTQ rights, social justice to arts, culture, mental health, and more. Our guests are change makers who share their insights, challenges, and triumphs, igniting conversation that promotes empathy, understanding, and love. So whether you're part of the LGBTQ community or an ally looking to expand your knowledge and show your support, the Love to Straight show is for you. Together, we can build bridges of understanding and acceptance, celebrating the beauty of what makes us all unique. So sit back, grab a drink, and get ready for the show. Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the Leftist Right Show interviews. I'm your host, as always, Scott Fullerton. I'm always honored to be able to talk to amazing celebrities and personalities from the worlds of entertainment, foodies, books, music, and advocacy, all for our LGBTQ community and wonderful straight allies. Joining me in studio today, my friend Levi Kreis is making his third appearance on the show. Levi's a true renaissance man of the entertainment world, an Americana soul recording artist, Tony Award winning actor, and a charismatic podcast host. His talent knows no bounds, my friend. Known for his exceptional talent and magnetic stage presence, Levi is gearing up for his Home for the Holidays tour, a stunning piano vocal holiday show that seamlessly weaves gospel, country, rockabilly, and jazz into a fresh and flawless collection of Christmas classics and holiday tunes. This is his ninth time taking the show on the road. He's going all over the country from Maine to Florida to Southern California to Chicago. He's doing it all. If you haven't completed your record collection with one of Levi's 11 amazing albums, I suggest you get on that right away. His songs have been featured from Vampire Diaries to So You Think You Can Dance, and you're in for a definite treat. So let's sit back and welcome to the Left of Straight Show, the amazing Levi Christ. But first, let's take a look of Levi touring recently in the fantastic musical 80s Town. Welcome back with eight Tony Awards and the Grammy for Best Musical Theatre Album. We are absolutely thrilled they are performing here tonight. You can see them live at the Amundsen Theatre in Los Angeles through May 29th, here performing Way Down, Hades Town. Please welcome the outrageously talented cast of Hades Town. was a railroad track. Oh, come on! There was a train coming up from way down below. That was not six months. Better go get your suitcase packed. Yes, it's time to go. I followed that dollar for my long way down, far away from the poorhouse door. You either get the hell or the hate is town. Ain't no difference anymore. Way down, hate is down. Way down to the under the ground. Down there, it's a bunch of stiffs, brother. I'll be bored to death. Gonna have to report some stuff just to entertain myself. Give me morphine in a tin. Give me a crate of the fruit of the vine. Takes a lot of medicine to make it through the winter time. Way down, Hades Town, way down underground. Every little penny in the wishing well, every little nickel on the drum. Hungry, 
And everybody saw it was the same man they'd been singing about. You're early. I missed you. Mr. Haters is a mighty king. Must be making some mighty big deals. It seems like he owns everything. Kinda makes you wonder how it feels. <laughs> All aboard! A one, two, a one, two, three, four, way down! back guys and let's welcome to the show levi christ levi how you been my friend hey scott it's good to see you see you it's good to see you and see you yes we've talked on yeah. the phone so many times but we haven't really got to see each other i'm loving you're in the christmas spirit there we're getting ready for this holiday show <laughs> I'm Already, so yes. To talk to you. How you doing? I've been doing great. As you can kind of tell, we threw up a little holiday a little early. And, you know, for for the ninth year of doing a holiday tour, uh, you know, we're we're going to be leaving in just a few days. And so we have to get it in. We have to, it, we have to enjoy it before we, we leave, like right at Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is generally like the first weekend of touring. And then we don't, we're not home until January after that. So Right. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Well, you got to yeah. have a little bit of that holiday cheer. Just get those spirits up for that festive time. I love it. I know, but you know, talking about Christmas too much before a certain date really does piss a few people off. It's a little triggering for some people, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, shoot, you go into Walmart after uh, February and you start seeing Christmas decorations. It seems anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. Well, we haven't yeah. talked for the last minute. I think the last time Bad Habit had just come out. Um, yeah. Such a powerful song, such a great. Uh, Deep subject, of course. I love bopping to three words. That was my favorite song. I just love yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Just, I love your music, my friend. I'm, I'm great to see you on tour. It's going to be an exciting time for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was a lot. It was a fun record too. It was fun to three words is a bop. It, it, it's still like that's the song that will not die. <laughs> It's well, like it's, I love it. Still I keeps it's, finding it's, new audiences. Yeah. You know, I I went over. Uh, I was doing some European tour dates this year, and they booked me to like do a you know a Broadway concert, which is very common as a Broadway guy. Right. And these particular audiences would interrupt me and be like, "I need to hear three words." <laughs> <laughs> and so we would do we would do three words and and uh a few other original stuff so it was kind of fun <laughs> i love the song i love the music video i love the black and white i mean you're so artistic with those things but that's amazing Thanks. but we got to start we played Hades Town to bring you in talk about that tour such an amazing production i mean all my friends in la were waiting in line to get to the amundsen to see you guys there talk about how uh, that tour was it was Surreal, eight-time Tony Award-winning musical, original music by Anais Mitchell. As a singer-songwriter, I was drawn to do it because I wanted to look under the hood 
and see exactly how she was able to channel her artistic endeavors, her lyricism, her melodies into a beautiful classic story like that. And so selfishly, I may have wanted to kind of see how it all worked, but you know, on the outside, it was just great to step into the Tony award-winning role of Hermes, a wonderful role. And uh, of course, you know, Mr. Andre de Shields killed it. And the wonderful thing about our director was that she was very welcoming to us and smart, I think it was for her. For those of us who know who we are and how to honor the script, but add our own fingerprint to it. She was very willing to do that. Not only with just me and the role of Hermes, but but uh, Orpheus and Eurydice both were so uniquely different than what they were on Broadway. And it worked. I mean, it was really fun to read, like, I, I don't like to read anything during performances or during during a, a run on Broadway or a run yeah. in, on tour. Um, and I ha read no first national tour press, but when I got home, it was fun to look at Reddit and read the debates between who likes what cast first better because our, our cast was just so uniquely different and people like really, really loved that, uh, that, that we had our own dynamic that was just different. So it was fun. The creative freedom was great. The love for the musical, everyone loves this musical and, uh, it, it it was a very, very tough job, but at the same time, you know, eight, eight shows of me singing up there, all that was not easy, but uh, right. I'm so glad that I said it because uh, cre recreating that role and reimagining what it can be creatively as an actor was just like so fun. So I bet. I mean, it's not you. You haven't been on the on the boards for a while there. I mean, of course you did Rent. Of course you did Million Dollar Quartet. All that mm -hmm. stuff. But and you're you're going on tour all the time. I mean, you're a touring musician. But like yeah. I said, eight shows a week uh, is a little different than getting to jump on the bus between towns and have at least a couple of days or write your own schedule. I guess would be. It's totally cool. true. But see, I'm of the generation where we do it and we don't complain. These youngins think that eight right. shows a week is like, you know, torture. And I'm like, y'all, then find another job, you know? <laughs> Where's Patty Lapone? <laughs> Where's Patty Lapone? She's going to, she'll well, say it for the me. the creativity of it too. I mean, you, like you said, we're, we're of a certain age. I'm older than you, but there was a work ethic involved, right? It's not like yeah, uh, yeah. we go to Zoom meetings now and we create things on our iPhone and send them out to TikTok and we're done, right? Now these- Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a work ethic involved in really getting out there and doing the business of shows. So yeah, I love it, was, it. it was really fun because everyone who's sort of from my generation of theater and yeah. older, like we're not missing shows. We're going on if we're sick. There's no like we're we're so old school against the you know <laughs> the the more liberal um, minded work ethics. I suppose I can say I don't know I how to know. say. It. <laughs> no, it's it's true. It's a hundred percent true, and I talk about it all the time with a lot of my yeah. actor friends and even producers and directors. Same thing. A lot of producer and directors get fed up with it, but uh, I love yeah. that you talk about your director in that way. Where it's how good of that for him to kind of give you that freedom. That shows a lot of confidence in himself, knowing that he can kind of take that and work with it, and to let your vision be part of his vision. That's pretty exciting. I like hearing. Yeah. That. Yeah, it, 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 uh, it, it expresses a lot of confidence in the actor. And I think that I've always been someone when people know that I know who I am as an actor and how I can best serve you and you give me the space to do it, it you know, it's just a perfect synergy uh, of, of then, then I know you know, and I can really more create, more constructively listen to what your constructive criticism will be because we're on the same page here. It was a great working relationship. Yeah. That's fantastic. And of course, I've been on the lookout for the untitled Levi Christ Broadway project, of course, that we've been teased a little bit about. Uh, I mean, I've done the, I kind of checked my email. I'm on the, I'm on the Levi Christ email, of course, and yeah. the page there. Yeah. Um, I'm so excited for when this thing comes out. And this has got to be kind of a good workup too. doing the, during productions got to be kind of getting even more excited about it, I would think, right? Oh, listen. So, yes, we're, 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 
we have a package together. We've we've had conversations with a few producers. We are slowing our roll right now because of the holidays. Uh, a little teaser, though. I am going to be releasing a a new song every two months, pretty much consistently, starting in May of next year. Wow. But those songs are going to be songs from the new musical as well. That's so, so I'm exciting. going to be able to start telling the story through, you know, through pop releases and, and, and through social media conversations as the life of it begins to, to find its home uh, privately uh, with conversations. You know, ultimately, we would want a, a strong regional production with eyes on New York. And, and, and it's just it's it's come along so well. And so I'm just I wish I could, like, say a ton about it. but. <laughs> but I you know, people will hear the mean, first song in I'm May. Excited. I mean, I remember when yeah. you were talking about it in the beginning, <laughs> you're working with Randy for the, getting the book done and you're going to yeah. hopefully make two albums out of it. So I'm just, the music's going to be starting. Oh my God. Yeah. You okay. remember all that. I remember yeah. all yeah. that. Yeah. And I think yeah. everyone, I mean, you talk so lovingly too about your fandom and everything. You have like the LK crew and everything that kind of works together. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And you have that membership page where you can kind of learn different things get sneaked up ahead of time. But yeah. you really do have a great fan base. I mean, you got to love the feedback you get and the inter interactivity with everybody, right? They, they honestly, I have to say, are my first priority because I think a lot of us who came up through the 2000s and found ourselves in what would be life altering opportunities with major record labels or with the entertainment industry and knowing at the time the entertainment industry if if they found out you were out or you were openly gay uh that was the end of your opportunity and and if people know my story and the and they will um about coming through eight major record labels that when the marketing department had discovered that I had been outed on my campus and that there was no putting me back in the closet, that ended some major opportunities, like a once in a lifetime shot, eight different times, right? And so when, because of always going it on my own and then turning to my community and doing music, you know, with my first and second album were, were very much me feeling my way through the six years of conversion therapy, the, 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 what is it like, you know, being open professionally and all kinds of boys I was falling in love with for my first album and wrote a song about every one of them. You know, it's like my gay fans and my fans who have been there from the beginning, like they are my record label. They, they are my A&R team. They are my reason. You know, they have been my crowdfunding and they are now my LK crew membership. Like they actually really are the, re the relationship I have that keeps my music going, period, you know? I mean, that's they do. Amazing. I think that's how you look at it. It's like, it's just the truth, you know? Yeah, like I said, I remember I remember the crowdfunding yeah. and everyone being on board and being so excited to kind of get the little snippets where you get just, and, and you, you're so, you reach out so well. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of artists will do it. We'll start something like this, a little Patreon page or something, and they'll kind of let it go by the wayside and just not pay attention. But you've really been there for your fans, which is one of the other things that I love about I, you. I try to. I'm really hard on myself about it. Like, I literally want to, like, you know, send my body part to them. You know, it's just like, but but it's like the, the minute that things get too busy, of course, like, you know, I'm creating a musical. I had to take a break with my podcast to do the musical while I kept on my tour dates and doing Hades Town at the same time. Uh, you know, but I'm, I'm probably, I guess I'm, I'm probably better than a lot of people keeping up with it. I just, I just think about it a lot because I just want, I'm probably really over the top about <laughs> how, how, um, how much I want them to know how much I appreciate the fact that it is that relationship that, that um, keeps me doing what I do, you know? That's that big, beautiful heart of yours, my friend. Now, how do you balance all that with the personal life? I mean, you got, you're on tour all the time. You have a, yeah. a gorgeous man at home and everything. How do you kind of make sure you have people that want to talk to you through the social media? How are you balancing all of that together? I mean, that's got to be a trick. I could imagine. Um. I am I am a time management ninja. I will tell you that a little a little secret. Like I'll give you one amazing amazing little 
for anyone who needs a time management ninja trick right now, I'm going to give you a teaser. Okay, so it. this is called an E3D, which is called Every Three Days, and it is an E3D list. And this E3D list makes sure that every three days I'm doing my live show work, I'm doing my producing music, I'm working on the membership site, I'm doing, I'm in production classes, I'm in marketing classes, and I'm working on my podcast. I have to do three hours of that, 90 minutes of that, three hours of this, three hours of this. And if I do this every three days, all I got to do is wake up, look at this, and do what's in front of me. And I manage somehow <laughs> to, to keep it up, you know? So I, I like, I like, I geek out on weird things like that. I like, I really do. Like I am in a, I am in a sauna workstation and I have my singles literally planned out right now through 2025 with subtasks that are planned. I mean, all the way down to like conceptualizing the, the photo shoot for the May release. I mean, like I have everything planned for two years and I know that I have to do that even though, you know, if you sit down and do it. <laughs> For a couple of days planning, all then you got to do is wake up your phone and look at your notifications and do what you're told to do. You know, right. you know? so I keep up pretty well with it, uh, even even though like I do, I, I I still struggle to kind of juggle all the hats. That's for sure. I want a T-shirt. I want I have an Einstein and E3D next to it. Instead of MC E3. squared, I think that'd yeah, be an yeah, amazing yeah, yeah. T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I heard that. I think it was like some some uh, somebody's somebody has a audio book. Phrase, I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing, though. I love that. So, I how mean, do you keep all your? How do you how do you organize your podcast and stuff? Do you uh, do you keep it? In I a work do. Phone? I keep all my interviews on my phone on my memo page on my phone. So that's how, uh -huh. how I keep all my interviews straight. And then I have everyone broken down to files. So I have a full tera I have a terabyte hard drive disk that keeps everything on, and I just kind of push everything over to it. I record everything. Yeah. I yeah. have a whole system. But yeah. yeah. It's it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. filled up I bought my first terabyte drive for this season that started at the end of March. And I have like hundred and twenty gigs left is all. Oh my god. Was <laughs> We've had a lot of a lot of shows so far. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, we're talking about the ninth season on this, and we're going to get to it in a second. I want to play one of my favorite songs that you've performed. Yeah. But talk about any memorable, anything that kind of sticks out to you over the nine years of a location or a venue or an interaction that you've had that really you know, kind of sticks out and makes you come back for more? This is easy. This is easy. And especially being that we're on left of straight, right? So one of the things that I think was in all of the nine years most moving for me my husband is a classical crossover recording artist. Uh, his name is Jason Antone, and he recorded a gorgeous record with a 60-piece orchestra, and we wrote the title track together, Inside My Heart. Amazing video, if your listeners want to look it up. But to answer your question, we also did the duet, Come What May, from Moulin Rouge. And so... <clears throat> In one of my shows in my hometown, because I start I started adding my hometown to my tour schedule because it just felt kind of special to me. And it became a holiday tradition for my local folks and my mom and dad come every year. And, you know, and it's, it's just kind of like sweet. But then Jason was my guest the year his album was coming out and we were going to see Come What May. Now, I am in a small town, graduating class of five people. I was valedictorian with a C average. <laughs> so like, and I remember, you know, a couple of guys being beat up in some, in some parking lots for being gay. It was definitely not the environment, you know, small town America in the late eighties and nineties. It's just not, not good. Um, when I realized during the show, that my husband was about to come out in front of my hometown and sing a love duet with me, I felt dizzy. I felt like, oh, fuck, what did I do? And we started the song. And as it began to happen, I began to just feel like this whole theater, like on our side. And when we ended the song, I had that that mo that old moment that that little gay kid who was afraid of like in his hometown. All of a sudden, everybody stood up and gave a full standing ovation in that house 
<sighs> and and to me it was like not a, really about the song then it was about like we as your hometown accept that you're here accept your husband and that you guys blew us away with this duet and great for you and we're here to enjoy you like it 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 was like it was it was a sign that things have kind of changed uh in this world you know and, and even in my small town it's like a lot of and a lot of and i'm in the south so a lot of people like just have this sort of blanket judgment about any any small town southern town and i think what's really been amazing in, a, in that moment I realized, and, and this has continued to be true, I find, that people's minds have changed, you know, because they have sons who are gay and nephews that are gay. And, you know, and, and it's, 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 it's not what it used to be 20 years ago, you know? It's an amazing, I got goose pimples through that. That was amazing. Oh it's my so God. cool, isn't it? It's like That's the so best story. Cool. It was such a Love cool experience. That. Yeah, yeah. Now talk about what's Christmas been like in your family. I mean, you you stay you're home near your parents and everything a lot yeah. of the time when you're not traveling. Yeah. Uh, have you always guys been a close family? Well, what's Christmas has been like to you and your husband? Do uh, his family and your your family? What's what's that dynamic like? We all we uh pretty much always spend Christmas in um in Chicago with his family and I, right. and my in laws are so loving and accepting and cool and and they're second generation polish so i get the full polish experience complete with polish language it, it, i mean we have all that i mean like it's 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 hardcore polish christmas and it's amazing nice. uh we have thanksgiving with my mom and dad uh of course we've always kept the tradition of of being with family for for both for both of the holidays um you know, and 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 the mom and dad's holding on pretty good. They're healthy. They're feisty. So I'm yeah. sure they'll be ready for Thanksgiving soon. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we have. To, I mean, I have to keep an eye on my mom. She's a handful. <laughs> She's I a handful. Yeah, I know what that's like. Very she keeps good. asking me to like if she can finally sing a duet, a Brenda Lee song, a Brenda Lock like, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree. Is it my year? <laughs> can I can I get up there and sing? And I'm like, no, your voice is horrible, mom. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mom. Oh, but she that. can perform and she believes that because she's a good stage presence that it doesn't matter that she can't carry a tune in a bucket there you but go not, right if not you look true, the part, everyone, no one else knows, right? yeah 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 oh, that's yeah. Hilarious. yeah well, i'm glad you take the time because a lot of people, touring people don't i mean they're on the road all the time they don't see family kids things like that i yeah. love that you guys to make that yeah. a special time for you so that's awesome well and what's crazy is now Six years ago, I realized I had three other brothers that I didn't grow up with. So now holidays are like, right? Like this I don't is how think it happened. We ever talked about that story? No, I did not know no, that. No, 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 no. So I was doing a show. Um, like I guess it's six years ago now. I was doing a show here in town. It was a theater, and I was signing CDs afterwards, shaking hands, meeting people you know, engaging, uh, doing my job. And my mom pokes me on the shoulder and says, "Hun, I know you're busy right now, but I'd like for you to meet your brother. And I had never even heard of this. Like what I didn't even, first of all, can we start with, I have a brother <laughs> because you've never told me this. And secondly, I look up and there was this like, handsome 30 year old standing there with his hand out stretching us hey man my name is dusty i hope it's okay that i'm here i've been following you for a few years and i'm like Whoa. and then i have to leave that scott and go back <laughs> i have to leave that and go back to <laughs> signing cds <laughs> so yeah, I got to know I got to know Dusty for a while and then he actually told me that there were two other brothers. And so I, I eventually met them, but not until our dad uh passed away. Um he was a, he it, he made it kind of difficult for us boys to get to get fully together again. So um so yeah, that's that's kind of a a, a nice addition to, you know, if we're going to have a family conversation, I can't not mention the 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 there you three, go. The I three didn't new brothers. That story. That's strange. Like I said, I've been, I've been talking to you or following you for six years. I never heard that. That's amazing. 
yeah. I kind of, I, I hate to make it all about me. I had this kind of the same thing happened. I didn't realize until I was 14 years old that my dad wasn't my real dad, that uh, him and my mom got married when I was like one and a half, two years old. And when I found out at 14, 15 years old, I was working for my real dad and not knowing it the entire time. Shut was, oh, up. We, we're going to have to have coffee, my friend, and chat. That's amazing. How does that happen? <laughs> it's wild. Isn't it crazy? I That's mean, crazy. Oh, my God. Can, <laughs> Funny stuff. Ugh. All right, let's take a break and, and <laughs> think about that for a second. I want to play one of my favorite Christmas movies. I've been thinking of Dolly Parton all the time. Even we talked off air about Blake and Emerson just went to Dollywood. So Dolly's always on my mind to begin with. But uh, Hard Candy Christmas, um, you play it in concert. And I love that song. And it's such a great uh, kind of a song. We're going to play that. I don't know if it's on the tour or not. We'll find out afterwards. But this is. My good buddy here, Levi Kreis, in studio with me today, getting ready to go on his ninth annual holiday tour. And here's a little hard candy Christmas. We'll be back on the other side. You listen to Left to Straight Show, right here in the Left to Straight Show.
All right, we are back. That was my very special guest today. Mr. Levi Christ is in studio with me today. That is Hard Candy Christmas, oh, one of my favorite Christmas. songs. And you in concert, any of your videos in concert, I love, my friend. But are we going to see that on this Christmas tour? or is it? You not are. Oh, yeah. Listen, I, I think that's one of the songs that, um, A, a lot of people have found on YouTube and have come to my music because they found that. Um, cause it's, I, I, it's like, I guess there's not a ton of covers of it. And I don't know there's a lot of guys. Well, it's, it. you're, you're so soulful. And like you said, not a lot of guys, but you're, it just brings out the soulfulness of your voice, especially. I just it kind of does for a, a country Dolly song, doesn't it? But I, yeah, I can't get, I can't not do it. It's like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be doing it, uh, with an, just me on the edge of the stage with an acoustic guitar player this year. So I will be away from the piano for for that and for like River by Joni Mitchell um, nice. uh, and, and just have a little nice acoustic moment kind of in the audience and get to know people a little bit, get a little close rather than having to be, you know, upstage with a band the whole time. Now, these you've got some great locations we talked about before. You can be down in Florida, a couple locations in Florida, Chicago, out in Maine. You're going to be in Palm Springs, Chicago, Columbus, Ohio. I'm excited for it. Your home of Tennessee. Um, any any reason you're drawn to these states? Is it kind of just uh, places you've been to before? You have a good working relationship, or is there anything that draws you to these locations? Yeah, you know, I mean, these are these are kind of like uh, if if we end up having say nine to fifteen shows every tour, like a lot of times these 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 cities will be the repeats because these are where a lot of uh, people who've just always uh, known about my music and you know. I mean, and it's right. just like, I guess if we had more weekends, we would be tack on more, but I definitely always want to go to Chicago. It's sort of nice because we're, we start here where I have Thanksgiving with my family and right. we end on December 23rd in Chicago, where I get to be with my husband's family. And then we just fill in all the times and we have to get Florida in for a little bit of sun, of course. So there you go. You that gotta... might have something to do with our Florida bookings, right? Just to, <laughs> just to have a you little know, bit of beach you know, time. sunshine and get some yeah. color in the cheeks. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark planning my friend i can <laughs> very very good i do have to ask a question though yes because this is gonna be my first time seeing the concert am i gonna see carney wilson pop up as a very special guest <laughs> i wish <laughs> talk about your obsession with carney baby oh my god well okay so my life was made when we we used to go back and forth on 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 twitter together in our dms before i deleted my Twitter account and now I tried to get like a new one just so I have my handle and someone else is not getting it. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with, uh, well, with Carney well. and uh, you know, I still am holding out hope that maybe one day the universe brings us together for a really lovely seasonal duet, perhaps. Nice. I don't know. I would <laughs> love that. <laughs> and what are some songs we can expect and what's maybe a song we might not expect on the concert tour? Oh, well, you know, I've got a lot of nice up-tempo fun stuff this year. Like I, I, a lot of new stuff that I'm doing for the first time. Um, most of the show is new songs that I've done, except, you know, obviously for Hard Candy Christmas, uh, right. um, Oh Holy Night, I can't not do as well. Um, and I and I do have this song that I've really loved. It's on my Broadway at the Keys album called Anytime I Am There. It's from a musical called Elegies. And, you know, when I was uh, doing a holiday show one year and, and my grandfather passed away uh, the morning before the first show, um, matter of fact, there's a video of me doing For Good in that holiday show. And he had just passed. And I swear to you, if you watch that performance towards the end, you can feel my granddaddy there in that video. It's crazy. But, uh, you know, I always do anytime because it's a song about like, you know, we all in the holiday season have our moments of missing the people who aren't with us still. But it's not a downer song. It's a song that's kind of a celebration of how they still are a part of us. And that song, every, every audience that I've, I, you know, I, I think if there's a, one moment it would be posting hey i got a lot of new songs this year i had so many people uh dm me and say yeah but you're gonna do anytime 
this year, right? Because <laughs> I think that a lot of people relate to it. I didn't think about that because I was like, no, I want to keep it like, you know, real fun, make sure I'm just really giving people a good time. And they're like, well, but we have to have that moment. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, right, right, right. right. No, that so, makes um, sense. yeah, yeah. I love that. And talk about, I mean, after you're going down to Puerto Vallarta, talk about the sun. That has just become the gay haven for artists in the wintertime. Yeah. Um, such great, amazing artists besides yourself. And there, um, Brandon and James, the cello yeah. and singing group play down there a lot. Yeah. Of course, um, uh, Spencer Day, who I love, he yeah. lives there now. Effie Passero lives there now. Does he live there? Spencer moved there. Yeah, Spencer oh. and Effie both live there now. So oh. it just talk about the draw, bringing you back there. Is it just the weather or is it, I mean, I have never been. I'm trying to go this year maybe for my first time. What's well, it is the like experience. Like for me, you know, because I do a lot of shows without my band, I love, I love an intimate space. Like I would rather do five nights in a small space than get everybody in one night and do one show just because I love the vibe of it. And so it's just the, and it's also kind of, it, I don't know, it just, it just, it's a nice fit for me. I really love a good intimate show. And I mean, it doesn't get any more intimate than <laughs> the PV rooms that we have, right. you know? And so I, I kind of like, it's, it's always, and I always leave a moment. I always leave the stro the show loosely unstructured so that I can have a breathing, living, unpredictable conversation with the audience if I need to. And so to me, it feels like they're sitting in my living room and we're just having a conversation, you know, like, so like, you know, there's a lot of people who put on a show and will put on a show at, you know, like they're, they're there to give you a spectacle. For right. me, it's like, we're having a conversation. I don't know where it's going to go, but we're going to have a fucking good time getting to know each other. And that's the vibe I love about PV, you know, for me. Exactly. No, I, yeah. I, I agree. I think that especially, I mean, most artists, artists are that way. I mean, they really like to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with their, with their yeah. listeners and you really yeah. get to kind of craft the show that way. So mm -hmm. Yeah. I totally understand that hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let everyone know where they can find the tour dates. I'm going to let them know your website has some amazing different links to it for everything. You, so you can go out and start buying these tickets. Let them know where they can follow you on social media, uh, what you have now. And let's yeah, my to last name is a little tricky for anybody who's still on the learning curve with me on any level. It's K-R-E-I-S. But just if you think German... You got it. It's Christ, right? Like K, like rice, right? So <laughs> LeviChrist.com has all the tour dates. And of course, I'm at Levi Christ on every social. So I love it. Well, my friend, it's always great catching up with you. I'm so excited to see you in Columbus. Um, I'm wondering if I play Tell Me Twice, will you dress up as the plumber? I just want you to come on over. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go get my mullet wig. There you go. I like yeah. it. <laughs> Anything else you want to share with the listeners before we let you go, my friend? No, it's so exciting that I'm going to see you in Columbus. Thanks for having me on. Anybody who's within earshot of the show who wants to join the holiday tour, you you know, check LeviChrist.com out and, and come see us. It's going to be a nice way to start off the holiday season for sure. It's going to be an amazing show. I'm so looking forward to it. Guys, like I said, 11 albums. If you haven't completed your record collection yet, you need to go out and get some. He's there just some amazing work. Look for his work on YouTube. You can find uh, all sorts of things from Million Dollar Quartet and from Hades Town. All sorts of great things on there. Levi, stay on the line for me. We're going to play a little five questions with Levi in just a bit. We'll play next Tuesday, so be on the lookout for that. We appreciate you all tuning in, and you have a great afternoon. We'll see you next week, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Left of Straight Show. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast distributor and please give us a five-star rating so more listeners can find us. You can follow us on social media and be sure to check out our website, www.leftofstraightradio.com for contests and other news and information. See you next week.